Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you are new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking for reading inspiration or you like following book reviews, then feel free to stick around. Today I am going to be reviewing volume one of the comic series Prism Stalker by Sloane Leong. So this is what the cover looks like. It is a very colorful both cover and volume. The colors are what actually called my attention off the library shelf. So I checked it out and it contains, if I'm not mistaken, the first five like issues inside volume one of this series. I actually did not mean to get this comic book out. I was looking for a, another comic by the author Jeff Lemire, is that how you say his last name, whose work I really enjoy. And I went a little bit too far on the shelf and I saw um, we had moved him to the next last name, Leong. And I saw this one and I thought I have to give this a read. I want to see what this is about. So I brought it home and checked it out and gave it a read. The overview of the stories is we are following uh, Vep, Vep or Veep, I wasn't quite sure how to say it, who is a refugee. The overarching story is her planet that she lived on somehow had some problem with it and now she lives on this refugee asteroid but it's more of a living being in space and she has been selected to go to this other academy with all these other different species aliens and the academy is kind of over overseen by this group called the chorus which i kind of understand to be a galactic group and she veep is going to become a person who is going to help get other planets ready for like colonization and the like. So she's come from a refugee and she's been selected for this uh, rigorous training program and she has an opportunity to contribute to this overall galactic powerful group that she is now a refugee in. Overall, the colors are really what drew this book to me and the colors are probably what stuck with me the most as I read this book. So before I dive really into the plot, I just want to say something about my reading style. I don't know if I'm a dense person or if I just am a little bit slower to catch on to things. I think it's the second one. I think I just need a little bit more to catch on to because this book felt a little bit too disparate and I will explain what I mean. So some books, the author tells it as it is. This is what's happening. This is who's in charge. This is where Veep came from. This is where she's going. This is the chorus and what they mean. And other authors tend to have a more airy approach. They're going to give you a little strand here and a little strand here and slowly the strands are going to weave together and you're going to understand the plot. You aren't given all the information up front but slowly the reader starts to weave a picture of the story together and I call that like different disparate strands that kind of come together to show the story. I think the second approach having those disparate strands that come together maybe takes a little bit more work but I do think if you don't do it right you can leave your lead reader confused. So if you want to go that approach, you have to make sure that the reader understands. And this is a book where I'm not sure if it's just me, I need a little bit more of a direct plot to understand what's going on, or if maybe this wasn't executed exactly as the author wanted it, but I felt like all the disparate strands didn't come together tight enough, if that makes sense, for me to fully understand everything that was going on, or the plot was just loose enough where it always felt like I was confused and nothing was ever really clicking for me. I did understand the, the large overall plot, at least I think I did, and there were some really interesting features that I liked that the author included, but the disparateness of the plot was kind of a little bit much for me. I did think like it was starting to come together around the fifth section of this book, so I think maybe volume two, maybe if I had continued to read this, maybe if I had checked out Prism Stalker volume two and I kept reading it, all these strands would slowly come together and I would start to understand, but I would say I spent the first half of this book very confused and maybe I wasn't picking up on things like I should have. This book kind of touches on some things that are relevant to today's world. Something that I picked up right away is the role of language and the way that language plays with our connection to culture. So Veep has no connection to her mother tongue. So the people, the, the group that she came from spoke a language and when she became a refugee, she spoke in this galactic or this international language. So she's speaking something that everyone else can understand. However, she, isn't able to understand people like the generation previous to her who became refugees. She never learned that language and that's kind of we hear because the people who took them on as refugees want them to integrate into a culture, into a society, and want them to kind of separate from that past of them 
of themselves. But we find out later when she runs into more people from her planet and she's not able to communicate in that language, that's a barrier for her. And it kind of mimics stuff that's happened in the real world. We think of the Welsh language and we think of um, Native Americans in the United States and some of the things that were done in these groups and many other groups around the world to control a group a big part was to take away their language or to limit the transmission of language from one generation to another because you can kind of start to separate someone from their culture when you do that. That's not to say there isn't a role for learning a common tongue so you can communicate with a wider community. In here there's clearly some sort of galactic language that all the people can speak and all the different species can speak, but the there seems to be a... it didn't seem egregious or forceful it wasn't like she was being beaten for speaking her language but she there definitely was this benevolent frowning upon of her speaking what would have been her native language and therefore she never really learned that language and therefore she's connected and therefore or by this she's also connected from other people from her planet that she runs into later this I feel like goes hand in hand with a book, a nonfiction book that I read recently, The Language of Languages, which was a book by a, an African author who spoke a language that kind of had a bit of a minority status in the country that he lived in, despite having a lot of speakers. He talked about the importance of language and that connection to culture that one has with language. And I feel like those two books just went hand in hand. I think the... The way that Veet feels about herself as a refugee of not knowing where she fits in the world is kind of interesting. There's a lot of this questioning that the reader does when thinking about the chorus, which is this group that we get the impression kind of runs things or makes decisions, where they're kind of deciding whether or not someone is sentient enough to be taken on as a society or if they are going to be subjugated, kind of. We, we get little hints that there's someone making the decisions for all of these groups that they're running into in the universe and maybe who gives them the right to make that decision is kind of one of the questions. I think there's a lot of influence from different parts of the world interacting with each other in the past, some history, the colonization of America, some of that stuff I feel like is playing into um, influence in this series. Another series that I don't know if Leong has had any knowledge of, but I feel like kind of touches on this and I felt like there's a lot of parallels to was the Janitors of the Apocalypse series that I have been reading. It's a sci-fi series and it is in the future humans have gone feral and the galactic group has taken humans in and they're curing them from their feralness and they're allowing them to work in society and play this role and they don't really you know know any of their native languages they're speaking this other language and they're just doing their best and it comes to light that the plague that made humans feral wasn't an accident it was well, it was an accident, but it was accidentally put there by this galactic group and not necessarily uh, just something that humans did. And now this, the, the benevolent people who are taking the refugees in had a hand in kind of creating the situation. And now they're trying to cover that up and more or less atone for their sins kind of without letting the humans know what their true past is. And I feel like I saw a lot of that influence in this series as well, or in the first couple of volumes, first couple of issues of the series as well. And I think it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. I do think, like I said, the, the plot threads were just a little too disparate for me. I feel like I needed things to be brought together more and that could just be my preference as a reader or my inability to put these threads together. I would have liked just a little bit more structure on the plot or a little bit more content in the plot so I could understand where things were going. But overall, I think the color, the art is really what stands out in this series and I would read volume two just for the art itself. The colors are bright, loud, the characters are interesting, and I feel like the author draws on a lot of interesting elements or different historical events that happened in our real world to make this a very compelling book for the modern reader. I do recommend this book if you're looking for a comic series to read. Maybe someone else would be able to draw the plot threads together better than I can and someone else would be able to enjoy this book. You will definitely enjoy the art of this book. I have no question about that. So even if just for the art, check this book out, see what it's about and see if you like it as well. If you have any thoughts or comments about this series, if you've read this series, if you have anything you would like to add, put it in the comments below. I love to receive them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.